Hey there, legal warriors. In this video, I'm going to cover five reasons a prosecutor might drop charges in a domestic violence or domestic battery case. If you have a domestic violence case, if you're interested in this subject, this is the video for you. So stay tuned. My name is Lance Fryer. I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm has been defending people charged with crimes for more than 20 years. And I was a prosecutor for seven years before that, so I have a pretty good idea how prosecutors think. And one of the most common charges that we defend is domestic violence. And so in this video, I'm going to cover the five reasons a prosecutor might drop charges in a domestic violence or domestic battery case. So before I jump into that, if you find this video useful, please like and please subscribe because more people will get the help they need. So what do I mean by domestic violence case? Well, the most common charge here in Washington state is domestic violence assault in the fourth degree. That's any unwanted touching. There can also be felony level domestic violence, assault three, assault two, assault one. There can be domestic violence, malicious mischief, which is breaking of property intentionally, you know, when we're mad. There could be domestic violence harassment, making threats. There could be order violations, domestic violence. But let's mainly think about assault charges when we think about, uh, you know, domestic violence cases. That's the most common one. So um, there's two situations we could be facing with a domestic violence charge. One is we've been arrested, but we're not yet charged. And in that case, think about, hey, we're trying to convince the prosecutor not ever to file the charge. The second situation, which is more common, we've been arrested and we're already charged and have court dates. In that case, we're thinking about how can we uh, get the in-court prosecutor who's prosecuting the charged case to drop the case. So there's certainly more than five reasons, but I'm going to go over the five reasons that come to mind when I think about how to get a domestic violence case dismissed. I think the first uh, thing that we do, at least on a charge case, is oftentimes we're going to, uh, number one, uh, have the client do some things to help the prosecutor be able to see our point of view. Now, we're going to get into the evidence problems. That's part of the five, uh, five ways we can get a prosecutor to drop things. But um, one of the things we have to realize is the prosecutor has a job. The prosecutor needs to respond to the case. That's their job. And so oftentimes we'll have the client, innocent or not, um, do some educational classes, do some things, like an anger management class, could be DVMRT, do some things so the prosecutor is more willing to hear the other reasons why the case should be dropped. And so uh, if we do have a client, if your attorney has you do some things, it's not an admission of guilt. It's not because you need to do something, but we're trying to improve your chances of a prosecutor dropping the case, not for it going all the way to a trial and risking a conviction and letting the six people who aren't smart enough to get out of jury duty decide if you go home or not. OK, um, we're trying to get the prosecutor to drop cases. So if you do nothing, the prosecutor has no choice but just to go for your throat. OK, and if you do do a class or some classes, well, now at least it gives them some room emotionally and their ego some room to hear uh, what actually happened from your point of view. So number one is client efforts can help a prosecutor drop a case. The second uh, uh, reason a prosecutor might drop the case is lack of injuries, right? Lack of injuries. In other words, it's a proof issue. Uh, injuries are not required for to prove an assault charge in Washington state. In some states they are. Assault, think about assault in the fourth degree as any unwanted touching or even the imminent threat of unwanted touching. So um, a prosecutor doesn't need a red mark or a scratch or a bloody nose or pulled out hair to prove a case. But when there are no injuries in the prosecutor's mind, and remember I was one for many years, uh, it is going to be harder to defeat a defense from the defendant and the defense attorney. Because, you know, when we think about getting assaulted, there's usually some aftermath, some trauma to the body, be it a scratch, a red mark, a bruise, something. So if there are no injuries in a case, and uh, that might be a, pros a reason why a prosecutor might eventually drop the case if you and your attorney stick to it and do what's required to try to show what really happened. I think a third reason why a prosecutor might drop a case is 
the credibility of the alleged victim, right? Was the alleged victim drunk? Does the alleged victim's story make sense? Uh, is it possible the alleged victim was the aggressor? Um, is it possible the, vec the alleged victim, uh, let's say, you know, a, a man in this case, uh, you know, was bigger and stronger than the, the female that got charged with assault, domestic violence, and uh, maybe there's some wounds on him that could be uh, uh, defensive wounds. In other words, where the, the, the defendant, in this case, a woman was defending herself. And, um, you know, maybe the prosecutor now disagrees with the police officer's arrest decision. So the credibility of the victim, which is their witness, um, matters in determining do they have a provable case. You know, uh, they might also think about, is this alleged victim willing to show up and testify in court? That's not exactly credibility, but in the real world, in real life, witnesses need to show up and witnesses need to testify. And uh, you can't take that for granted as a prosecutor. Um, that's a real thing that prosecutors have to worry about. A fourth reason why a prosecutor might uh, drop a domestic violence type case is, um, you know, the lack of any independent witnesses, right? Um, sometimes there's an independent witness that makes that case provable, right? There's another family member there who saw it and says, yes, this happened. Or something got called in from a bystander in a parking lot. Uh, or, um, you know, we've got, uh, uh, um, if not an independent witness, we have a sort of a contemporaneous uh, request for help, right? Um, we've we texted someone, you know, hey, I'm getting beat up. Well, that person is the witness, even if not an eyewitness. Or there's a 911 call while it's going on. So the witness in that case might be the recording of the 911. So if there's a lack of anything else, if it's just he said, she said, that is a harder case to prove. And that might be a factor in a prosecutor deciding whether or not to drop a domestic violence case. And I think uh, the, the fifth uh, reason why a prosecutor might drop a domestic violence case, sort of a combination of the first four plus wishes of the alleged victim. Each prosecutor is different. It's very frustrating because the cycle of domestic violence uh, uh, is thought to be that uh, the alleged victim, uh, even if he or she is really was really assaulted, they'll often come to the defense of the perpetrator just due to how this stuff works. And sometimes uh, prosecutors are deaf to the wishes of an alleged victim because they're oftentimes wanting the case dropped and the prosecutor's thinking, well, I need to protect this person from him or herself, you know, uh, because uh, they're, they're part of the cycle of domestic violence and we need to make, we need to stop that even if it's against your wishes. So it's very frustrating uh, for for people in the uh, in the victim role when their wishes aren't listened to, but you know from working both sides, you know I can see both sides of it. But a very strongly worded uh, 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 position by uh, an alleged victim, along with the other issues in the case, and hopefully along with the defendant doing something to improve their situation, right? In anger management or domestic violence classes, or if alcohol is involved on the defendant's part, alcohol uh, treatment. Um, it can make a prosecutor more willing to listen to uh, what the alleged victim has to say. And I'll say that as cases get more serious, as cases move up to felonies, um, depending on the county, uh, I think, in my opinion, alleged victims are listened to less and less uh, on more serious cases. I, I hear them listened to more in King County than I do in Snohomish County, um, don't have a lot of frequent experience in other counties, but realize as the case gets more serious or as the record of the defendant is more serious, what the alleged victim has to say matters less to the prosecutor. They're just more likely to go ahead and do their best with or without the cooperation. And that's what much of the public might want. So that makes some sense. So those are five reasons uh, why a prosecutor might drop a charged case how those relate to uncharged cases? Well, an uncharged case is where uh, a defendant got arrested, but they're not charged yet. And that happens in a couple situations. I have a bunch of videos you can look at, at that, but one would be felonies. A police officer can't charge them with a felony. They can arrest them on probable cause, but they can't charge them. And so um, the prosecutor has usually at least 
three years to charge a felony. And while that they're deciding what to do, since the defendant's been arrested, they've typically been released, but they're not charged yet, um, some of these things can also apply, right? The alleged victim can let the prosecutor know what their wishes are. They, uh, he or she can change uh, uh, their statement to be more accurate. You know, they, they might've been mad and exaggerated or made something up. Um, the suspect, the potential defendant can do some, some things to better themselves, which can be presented to the prosecutor. So instead of dropping a charge case, you're trying to get a prosecutor there not to charge a case. Uh, I hope that makes sense. The second situation is on non-felonies. If you're in a county area where if the crime occurs in an unincorporated area, not in the city limits of a city, um, typically speaking, sheriffs and state patrol aren't authorized to file their own uh, charge into court. They have to sort of treat it like the felony cases where they can arrest, but it's up to the prosecutor to file the charges. And that's for procedural reasons and, and jurisdiction and distance, which if you get arrested in an unincorporated area, you're probably not charged yet. And once you get released, there's still gonna be several months until uh, a prosecutor makes a decision to charge or not. So reach out to an attorney um, and see what they can do to help because it's important to get in front of things. So those are some, not all, of the reasons why a prosecutor might drop charges in a domestic violence case or domestic battery case or domestic assault case. And if you found these useful, please like and subscribe. And if you have this type of situation, we've probably handled more domestic violence cases than any other type. Uh, we'll see what we can do to help. We'll listen to what happened and we'll be there for you. Thank you.